Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's been good. And I believe that he gave me a word for you this morning, but he also gave me a word for me this morning, and I'm going to believe and I'm going to hold on to it because this week has been a rough week, and I know anytime I'm going to minister and it's a really rough week, that usually it's a really important word. Amen. So God has something to say this morning, and the title of my message is, He is the Lord of the Increase. Amen. He is the Lord of the Increase. So whatever you've been asking for, yes, yes. whatever you've been seeking for, whatever you've been knocking for, He is the Lord of of the increase. Amen. And I'm coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting at verse 5. Hallelujah. He is the Lord of the increase. The scripture reads, Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believed. Even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he who plants anything. Neither is he that waters, but God that gave the increase. Now he that plants and he that waters are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. That word labor there, replace that with faithfulness. Okay, it's according to our faithfulness. For he that are laborers together with God, you are God's husbandry and you are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds thereon. But let every man take heed how he builds thereon. Yes. Today I've come to talk to you about, of course, the Lord who brings an increase. But I want to talk to you about a couple things before the Lord can bring that increase. God is first looking for faithful ministers. And that doesn't mean just a person that stands behind the pulpit. When you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you can minister right on the job. You can minister at school. You can minister at the grocery store. You can minister wherever your feet tread. That's where you can minister to a soul next to you. I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, I need you. I need you. Turn to the next person next to you and say, I need you. Because as the body, and I'm going to share, oh, I'm going to be a little bit transparent here. As the body of Christ, we need each other. Amen. I need you. Because there is a level of fellowship and ministry amongst believers that is needed in the body of Christ. We need to link arms and encourage one another in the body of Christ. I need Naya. I am grateful that God gave me a godly friend and of righteousness and that we can encourage one another to continue on this path. Because if you live a day on earth, you know that it's not always easy. And it's not always simple. And the Corinthians at this time were living in a time of car carnality. All that surrounded them was opposition to the direction that they were going. And they were facing all kinds of lusts and agendas against the Corinthian church at that time. And that's what's coming against us. A world that does not want Jesus Christ. Right. A world that does not want the things of God. That is looking for love. And that was one of the things that they worship. The goddess of love. And I look at this time and day and age. Everybody's looking for love in all the wrong places. So all these things were coming against the Corinthian church. And they were becoming tolerant of sin. During that time, they were allowing it to seep into the church. Let me tell you, if it comes in love, please watch each other's back. Yeah, that's it. Watch for each 
other. And I don't mean tear each other down and point the finger at one another, but protect one another from the things that can seep into the church doors. We don't want to become tolerant of sin. We don't want to become um, lackadaisical in our walk or come complacent in our walk. We want to grow and move forward. Be faithful in the things of God. Be faithful to cultivate your relationship with Him. And sometimes iron, sharpening iron, so we can grow in the grace of God and the things of God together. For, so the first thing we need to see is faithful ministers who are properly planted. What Pastor Matt and the team is doing here in this body is teaching you how to be properly planted in your faith, yes. in Christ, yes. with roots that are dug down deep in rich soil. Because what happens, as you know, the storms of life will come. Yeah. It's not a question of whether or not they're going to come. I was talking to my sister in the bathroom and she said she's been having a sinus infection, which affects the body. And that might be something that's little to you, but when it gets really bad, it affects your emotions. It affects your the way that you're able to function throughout the day. Okay, I'm talking about things that affect the body, not just physically, but the body of Christ. See, and when we're properly planted, we can travel through life with the grace of God and the joy of God and the peace of God. Even though winds and storms are blowing against us, we can continue to travel through this life in faith, believing God, trusting God, pressing into God. Amen. But then, being not just properly planted in him, but also being properly built in the faith. See, he just doesn't want you to be planted. He wants you to grow. He wants you to be built up in the faith. He doesn't want you to just be an occupant of a seat. Okay? He wants you to participate in the kingdom of God and what he is doing here on this earth. Amen. And I'm going to say this because as a minister, a lot of the times... And I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I'm going to say it anyway. A lot of the times, the workload of the kingdom of God gets put on the pastor and the couple people that are around him. But like I said, you turn to the next person and said, I need you. Well, we need you. We need you. Each one of us are called. Each one of us are chosen. We need you and we are going to mop the floor, and we're going to clean a toilet, and we're going to wipe a kid's nose when they're sick. We need you. Each person is vital and important in building the body of Christ. You wiping that child's nose, and that mother seeing the love of God through you might be the very thing that keeps them coming back into the church doors. So don't see your place in the body of Christ as insignificant because it's not. It's a vital part of the body of Christ. My pinky is a vital part of my body. And if it gets cut off, it's going to hurt and I'm going to have a problem. Okay, so each portion is important. So he wants to build us. He wants us to be faithful, properly planted, and built up that he can bring the increase. Amen. See, there's something that we need to do with our faith. See, it takes faith to be faithful. It takes faith to stay planted. It takes faith to be built up. And the increase here is to, gr to grow, mm -hmm. to enlarge. Yes. And that's what I believe that he not only wants to do in our lives individually, but he wants to do it corporately. Yes, Lord. But it takes you and Jesus getting together and allowing him to cause you to grow. That when we come in this these doors... That we can have the operation of the Spirit moving amongst us in a corporate setting. Yes, yes. But it hinges on your relationship. And I'm, I'll tell you this, this message for me was challenging. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we can go through life and get comfortable. Yeah. We can get stagnant in our relationship.
relationship with God or trials have literally beat our faith down so much that we're stuck in the spot that we are. But I'm here this morning to tell you that God wants to bring an increase in your life. And he wants to break through those chains and those walls that maybe have been built up around you or wherever you're stuck. It's time to move forward, church. It's time to move forward as you are in him. So let's move forward together. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Scripture says, who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom you believed and even as the Lord gave to every man. And I, and I, when I read this scripture, I was like, who's Paul? You don't know, you know, like the question, I'm like, who's Paul and who's Apollos? And I said, but faithful, but ministers, faithful ministers trustworthy ministers and I began to think about this and I began to think about what did it mean to be faithful and to be trustworthy well it means that God is able to trust you with accessing what he gave on Calvary see he wants to trust you with his son that's right. See, he sent his son to die for you, that you would have access to victory, that you would have access to never-ending peace, that you would have access to never-ending joy, that you would have access to power, that you would have access to the gifts of the Spirit, to the gifts of the Spirit. Okay, he wants to operate in this body here. And I believe that, that you have, there's a gift, that you have. Yes, yes. And if you haven't found it yet, start praying Amen. and start seeking yes. and start asking yes. and start knocking. Yes. Lord, yes. what's my gift? What have you given me? Because it says that he's given each one of us. That's right. So what has he given you? Mm. It's your turn to ask him. So what does it mean to be faithful? To be faithful in daily going to him. Daily accessing him. What does it mean? It's like a wedding ring and you're married to someone. And you look at that wedding ring. You're faithful to that covenant. You're faithful to that vow. Well, when you gave your heart to the Lord, his symbol of expression like a wedding ring was Calvary. So when you look down at your hand, you remember, I'm married. I love this person. That's good. But if you let that wedding ring slip off your finger, you would know my ring is gone. Yeah. Don't always bring back into remembrance what Jesus Christ did for you on Calvary. Yeah. Don't let it slip. Yeah. Don't let it slip from your mind. I know what it's like to go through some things and not remember the covenant right. and not remember what he's offered me. And I'm just sitting in my stupor in a self-pity party. Right. For right. I know what that's like. I am not perfect and I don't claim to be. But when I begin to remember what yes. Jesus Lord. Christ has Lord. died to give me, Lord. I begin to magnify Lord. Lord. his name. Yes. I begin to praise his name and the spirit of God can begin to give me peace yeah. or overcoming power from whatever I face. Yeah. So remember the covenant. Be faithful ministers. Faithful to remember what God has done for you. Because I'm telling you, when someone comes up to you and says, I'm going through this, the only thing that's going to be able to flow out of you is Jesus. Right. When you are a faithful minister, the only thing that you're going to be able to do is tell them how Jesus carried you through and can carry them through too. Thank you, Lord. That's his eternal love. The cross is an expression of his unending, eternal love. And so as we look to it, we can constantly remember what he's done for us. So when he said, who is Paul? Paul was a sent one. Paul was trusted by God to be revealed the message of the cross. Amen. That was a big deal. <laughs> That's what set us free. And I began to think about what happened with the man of God that God trusted.
trusted. And it said, it wasn't without trial. That's right. It wasn't without loneliness. It wasn't without beatings or shipwrecks or being scorned. It wasn't without being hungry or being thirsty or being mocked and ridiculed. This man of God that was trusted with the revelation of the cross had went through some things. That's right. So don't be discouraged when you look up and say, God, why am I going through this? Maybe he trusts you. Wow. Maybe he trusts you to travel through some things. That he can change you and that you can be a benefit to that person next to you Hallelujah. that needs you. Because yes, we need one another. And when someone comes to me, I want to have something to give them Amen. that's eternal, that's of substance. Amen. I want to have something to give them. Who else was he? He was a missionary who planted churches. I want you to get this picture of this man because the scripture says, who then is Paul? Meaning that he was no, he was nothing. It was all God. It was all God. But he was a missionary that planted churches. He had a genuine heart for Christ and the body of Christ. He always wanted to uplift and edify and teach and exhort and build believers up. He said, I hope that Christ be formed in you. This was the heart of God that was in Paul and that needs to be in us as Amen. faithful ministers. I pray that Christ be formed in you. That's what we desire. He wrote 13 of the epistles. Who was this man? He wrote 13 of the epistles. But Paul wasn't always this man. Right, right. Paul was Saul. And he was a Pharisee of all Pharisees, and he killed Christians, and he killed believers, and he mocked them, and he scoffed them. But one day, Jesus showed up on the road to Damascus and shined his light and knocked him off his high horse and revealed himself, sometimes even as a believer. God has to knock us down so we get off our high horse. And stop thinking we're better than one another. So maybe we can see who is Angela. Come on. Who is Naya? We're nothing without him. I would be the same drug addict I was before if I did not have Jesus now. I would be in the same darkness if I didn't have him. And I mean daily. Daily. I'm not talking about. deeper 
and deeper and your tree gets stronger and stronger and stronger and maybe someone will come eat a piece of fruit off your tree because you begin to bear fruit because of the things that you went through. You can't bear fruit without trials. Nobody can see Jesus in you. Well, they can when you're on the mountaintop. But give me a person that I can see Jesus in the valley. Yeah. Give me a person that I can see Jesus in when their husband or wife passes away or they lose a child or get sick. That person that I can see Jesus in when they're traveling through the trials of life, that's when he gets the glory. And that's when he shines. Who is Paul? Who is Apollos? Apollos was... An Alexandrian Jew, he was taught by Aquila and Priscilla, and he was very forceful in the Old Testament, Old Testament. but he began to learn God's way and his ministry prospered. So he was a minister of the gospel who helped Paul plant this church in Corinth. Who is this man? Who is this man? The scripture says, who are they but ministers? What's a minister? And I liked this. It's one who runs errands. Mm, praise God. Anybody like to run errands in here? Because <laughs> I don't. One who runs errands. An attendant. A waiter. Amen. Next time you're mean to your waiter, think of me. <laughs> At one who takes care of others. Wow. See, what's a minister? Not someone, okay, yes, we are ministers that stand behind this pulpit. But like I said, can you get in the trenches yes. with one another and take care of one another and cry with one another and stand with one another? And how about rejoice yeah. when your brother or sister gets yes. a promotion Amen. or they get something good Amen. in their lives and not be jealous That's and right. envious and tear them down and be snooty about it. Come on. See, can we rejoice at the benefits yes. of one another? Can we stand with a brother or sister who falls and not be ashamed to be seen with them? Come on. That's a minister. Amen. When you're able to help one another, when you're able to serve one another, That's when right. no one else is looking. Praise God. See, it's just you. And Jesus, and that, that's a minister, one that is willing to do whatever it takes for the cause of Christ and help whoever it takes for the cause of Christ. It's not about being all put together. Amen. It's about loving souls Amen. and loving the person next to you. Thank you, Jesus. It's about loving the person on the street. Now you have wisdom. That's right. Have wisdom. Yeah. That's right. Okay? Have wisdom. Pairs. Okay? But you want to love people because Jesus died for everyone. That's right. Amen. He didn't just die for you and me who have a specific call on us. He died for every single person. That's what a minister is. And remember, we all fall short of the glory of God. So remain transparent and humble. Say you're sorry. Yes. Yes. That's a minister. Yes. Say you're sorry to one another when you offend one another. When I offend Naya, I, quick, make it right quickly. That's a minister of the gospel. Yes. Yes. Jesus came to serve, not be served. So take it from the master. It said, how did he do this? He gave his life a ransom for many. So you want to say, well, how can I be a minister? Give your life to Jesus and to souls. Give your life to building the kingdom of God and building up people. I know for me, this last week with fellowship, it's been hard. It's been hard. I needed someone to come alongside me and tell me, Angela, it's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. We need that. We need encouragement. And I need 
to be given to the kingdom of God. And I need you to be given to the kingdom of God. Right, right. And then the scripture says in verse 5, even as the Lord gave to every man. I wanted to talk about this because this came up in a couple conversations and lunch here when I've ministered here before. That the Holy Spirit has a specific function for each one of us. He is the gift giver. Yes, yes. It's okay to go to the Lord and ask him, what is my specific gift? Because he didn't save you to not give you a gift. Mm. Hey, your gift might be being merciful to people. It might be being a helper and a servant. It might be kids ministry. It might be being a musician. It might be encouraging women. It might be encouraging other men. It Just ask him, what is it that you would have me to do? What is it? Because we need a healthy body. And without a healthy body, we can't function properly. So do not feel insignificant in this place. If you are here, he wants you here. He divinely called you here. And kids, you have a place. You have a call. You have a specific design upon your life. You're not here by accident. You're here because you have a call upon your lives and what God wants you to do. See, each one of us, even the children and their call, that we're affected. We're affected. When one hurts, the other hurts. When one's going through, you might not see it, but spiritually, the body is being affected. And that's why we need to continue to have unity, one mind, one accord, one body, and always putting our hands to the plow. It's vital to bring an increase. You want an increase? Yes. You want to see a move of God? You want to see revival? You want to see an overflow in this church? You want to see ministers and musicians? You want an increase? We need you. Yes, yes. Each one of us need to get on our faces and say, I need you in prayer. Yes. I need you to be Hallelujah. praying for me. I, we need to be praying for each other. Mm-hmm. One right. mind, one body. See, in the valley, when Ezekiel was in the valley of dry bones, God brought the bones back together. He didn't leave them disjointed and he didn't leave them dismembered. By his spirit, he called them back together. And that's what I believe that God is doing in this place and in my life. He doesn't want me to be disjointed and dismembered in my faith through the trials that I went through. He wants to bring us back together. He wants to put our lives together. And he said, there shall be an exceedingly great army. That's what he's doing here in Patterson, Louisiana. He is raising up in an exceedingly great army. But he needs you to participate. Yeah. Get on your boots. And let's march forward. Let those things that are, let those offenses go. Let everything go that is holding you back from moving forward. Stay planted and rooted and be faithful to your call and what he's called you to do. And he can bring an increase. See what happens when a plant grows. There's a seed that grows. But it's got to grow in rich soil. And I believe that you're getting some rich soil in this place. I'm believing that the seed of Jesus Christ has been planted in your heart. And now is being cultivated in some rich soil. But are you getting adequate sunlight? (laughs) See, you can be taught the truth. And you can walk out those doors. And you can let it roll right off your back. You can forget about the light that has been revealed to 
you. But if you don't walk in the light and walk in the truth, then darkness shall come and your tree is not going to grow. So you wonder why things maybe haven't been happening the way that you want them to? Well, and I'm preaching to myself, so I'm not preaching down to anyone. Go sit in the light and let Jesus Christ reveal some things to us that we can begin to walk in his truth and walk in his ways and walk in his light. And some of those things are going to begin to dwindle. Because when we begin to magnify Jesus, everything else falls to the wayside. Everything else begins to fall. And his light is always greater than the darkness that surrounds us or is within us. So sit in his light. Are you getting sufficient water? Are you allowing yourself to, are you sitting in the presence of God and allowing the Holy Spirit to cultivate? And to hydrate. And to bring the elements that are needed. Are you listening to him? Are you hearing him church today? See because there's a hydration that is needed in the body of Christ. And the only way that can happen is if you continue to access his spirit through his blood. See, I believe in the blood of Jesus, and I believe in the operation of his spirit, and I believe in the gifts of the spirit, and I believe that the, what, that's what the word of God says. And if God says it, then I believe it, and I believe he wants to do that in this place, and in my life specifically, that he wants to bring an increase. But as you can see, you have a place. It's a relationship. Yes, yeah. yes. With Jesus, with your creator, are you staying planted in him? Why am I growing through this? Because you are growing. Bottom line, you're growing. Yeah. And growing pains sometimes hurt. Yeah. But there's something that you need to continue to do, and that's being planted and built up in him. Then the scripture says, but God gave the increase do you need an increase in your home do you need an increase at your job brother I'm believing that a job is going to be open up for you I'm believing for a spiritual increase I'm believing for a financial quickening I'm believing for healings upon healings I'm believing for minds to be restored and to be renewed I'm believing for sicknesses that you have dealt with for a long spiritual battles that you have faced to go. Anxieties, depressions. I'm believing God to bring an increase, to bring our family in. I need my family to come into the kingdom of God. I need the backslidden that I see to come back on fire for Jesus Christ. Do we need an increase in our youth or an increase in our kids or an increase? We need to see an increase. And I'm believing because it says, but God gave the increase. Yes. I wrote this down and it just hit me when I was praying. Christianity isn't for quitters. Amen. It's not for quitters. <coughs> Don't quit. And he won't quit moving on your behalf. Yes. Yes. He will move on your behalf. You don't see it. He's working. Yeah. You don't feel it? Yeah. He's working. Yeah. He is working behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And one day you're going to see the increase. Yeah. But know this. You can't fix it. You can't dress it up. Mm -hmm. You can't figure it out. Yeah. Some things you just can't figure out. And you have to be okay with that. Especially if those of us that like to be in control. <laughs> And you can't bring your own increase. That's it. That's it. Only he can bring the increase. And when he does it, it will stand. Yes. When he does it, it's Glory. going to last. Glory. When he does it, Glory. it's going to be eternal. When he brings the increase. And when he brings it, you're going to know he brought it. Because it. it's going to have his anointing and his fingerprints all over it. Yeah.
It's going to only be God. So what can I do? Position yourself in him. Anchor your faith in him. Eyes on him. Heart on him. Surrender to him. Yes. Surrender. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, give it up. Let it go. Let him have it. Because he's always, if he takes from you, he will always give you better. That's right. Yes. yes. Always give you better. You want an increase? The increase comes from constant belief. See, I began to read through this beautiful chapter of faith. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So you want to increase? Well, without faith, the elders couldn't have obtained favor. But with faith, they were approved by God. Look at the contrast here. Without faith, Abel wouldn't have been able to offer up a more excellent sacrifice. But with faith, he obtained witness and was righteous. See, it's not about what you do. It's about what you believe. So if you have failed, look back to the sacrifice. Look back to the blood of Jesus because you are righteous through the blood of the Lamb. And that's the only way. You can't hide enough. You can't read enough. You can't pray enough. You can't give enough. You can't let the old lady that's crossing the street and walking her back. You can't do that enough. You can't do enough to obtain favor with God. Now we do those things because we love him and we want to express our love to him. But you are righteous only because of the sacrifice. Without faith, Enoch would have lived a life that pleased God. But Enoch never saw death. He was translated and had a testimony that pleased God. Without faith, Noah wouldn't have been able to build an ark and save his family and warn the people in hostile opposition. But Noah had faith and built the ark and saved his family. What are you doing in this seat and no other family members are here with you? You're building the ark that will save your family. You're learning the truth. You're praying for your family and it will bring your family in. I'm believing that for mine. He became an heir of righteousness. Without faith, Abraham would have received his inheritance. You have an inheritance in Christ. It's yours. So when the devil tells me there is no victory, I say no, it's mine through the blood of Jesus. When the devil tells me or my own self tells me I'm not going to make it, I say no, it's mine through the blood of Jesus. When I have no power to overcome sin, I say no. Sin shall have no dominion over me. It's mine through the blood of Jesus. Oh, That's my inheritance. Come on. Yes. When there is no peace around me, oh, I can find perfect peace because it's mine because it's your inheritance. That's right. It's yours today, personally. And Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. He went to the promised land not knowing where he was going. I wake up some mornings, have no idea what the rest of my life holds. One day at a time, one moment at a time, one step at a time. Believing and trusting God. These pit people looked to a city whose builder and master was God. I want what God has. Nothing less, nothing more, just what he has. And without faith, Sarah wouldn't have been able to conceive a child in her old age. That was a miracle. You need a miracle? Well, God is still the God 
of miracles this morning. But why could, why did he do that for her? Because she judged him faithful. See, when in the beginning she left. Anybody hear anything from God and laugh about it? That's never going to happen for you. But she judged his character faithful. And that's who he is and he can't deny who he is. And the promise came to pass. They were persuaded of the promises. They embraced the promises. And they confessed the promises. It's okay to believe the promises, to embrace with all your heart the promises, and to confess God is going to come through. God is going to bring an increase. God is going to save my family. You can confess that. That is a proper biblical confession. That's it. The Bible says, so then neither he who plants is anything, neither he who waters, but God that brings the increase. Now that he that plants and he that waters are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. There is one who plants and there is one who waters. And without one another, the kingdom of God, I can't express this enough, cannot be at its full potential. God can do anything he wants without you. That's right. That's right. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> but he chose to work through you. That's a privilege. He doesn't need us. He can speak one word. Let there be light and there was. He can speak one word, but he chose Moses. To open up the Red Sea. He chose men. He chose Joshua. To walk across the Jordan. He chooses Esther. To go before the king. He wants to work. Within his people. But he can do it without you. But he doesn't want to. And that just blows my mind. Why Lord. Would you choose me. That's it. But there is a faithfulness and a diligence in every believer that is needed. Do you ask the Lord to stir you? I remember in Bible college, that was like one of our, our cries all the time. Stir us, Lord. Stir us, Lord, to hunger after you. Stir us, Lord, to thirst after you. Stir us, Lord, to want more of you. See, you can't even produce one God in yourself. Only he can produce that in right. you. Amen. So we need to begin to cry out. God, stir us again. Give me that fire again. Give me this again, Lord. There's an individual stirring and a corporate stirring. Right, right. See, your individual stirring will come and stir the corporate waters. Yeah, and then when I hear... Maybe Robert crying out from the back of the church and I begin to hear it becomes a fire that lights up within the church. So we just need one. We just need two. We just need three that will begin to cry out to the Lord and express. It's okay to express yourself to God. And you might not do it like me. And that's okay. Because we're unique and we're individual. But express yourself. To God. That's why you come to church. That's why you come here. Is so you can express yourself to him. If you need to cry, cry. Yeah. I have a friend. She said, Andrew, is it okay to ugly cry in church? <laughs> and I said, girl, you can cry whatever way you want. Just let it out. Sometimes we just need to express ourselves to God. Whether it's hurt. Whether it's pain, whether it's happy, whether it's sad, whether it's warfare, whatever it is, do it. Yeah. Because he's waiting for you right. to cry yeah. out to him. That's he right. wants you to, because when you cry out to him, it expresses you believe him. Yeah. Yeah. And he wants you to do that. Yeah. You are his instruments. Romans says, how will they hear without a preacher?
preacher. And you don't have to stand behind a pulpit to be a preacher. That's right. Preach with your life. Mm. Preach with your life as a minister, as a servant, as one who loves. Preach with your life. <laughs> and then Isaiah says, I heard a voice and the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And then I said, here I am, send me. Yes. Is that your cry? <laughs> here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. God, send me, Lord. See, you have a greater purpose for your life as a believer than just save and occupy a seat two times a week. There's a Christianity is not church, it's a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. The church is within the world, and we're to be separate from the world. You are the church, you are the living body of Christ. Not this building. If this building was not here, we could still have church. Because yeah, right. you're the church. And the scripture says, Now he that plants and he that waters are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Now I said in that song, will you be found faithful when he returns? Despite all odds. See, your reward is not based on your successes. Your reward is based on your faithfulness. Think about that. Your reward is not based on your successes. Your reward is based on your faithfulness. This world deems a lot of things successful. And God wants us to be prosperous. I believe that. I believe he blesses his people. But will you be found faithful to continue to believe him despite all odds? There is a parable of a faithful and unfaithful servant. Blessed is a servant whom the Lord, whom his is the Lord when he cometh and find doing so. When Jesus comes back, see the master is coming. Yes, yes. The master is coming. The master, he's coming. And I'm expecting him to come. And I anticipate his coming. And I'm excited about his coming. Because I want to be caught up to meet him in the air. See, he's really coming. So will you be found with oil in your lamp? Will you be found walking in the light that has been revealed to you? Now remember, we're all at different stages and we're all at different places. Yes, yes. So if the light that was revealed to one hasn't quite been revealed to the other, give them some time to yes. grow. Amen. Give them time to see, to walk, and do it in love. Yeah. Yeah. Love one another. Are you found cultivating your relationship with Jesus? Do you... If you were living in a household and Pastor Matt never talked to Danielle, I mean, what kind of relationship would that be? There would be no relationship. And God wants us to cultivate our relationship with him. <coughs> Are you for gathering souls? And this sometimes I feel like we can lose sight of a lot of the time. Because we get so caught up in our daily lives and our daily routine that we forget about souls. We forget about winning souls. We forget about telling souls about Jesus. I know for me, and I'll put myself out there, I, I used to have a real burning passion to constantly go talk to random people <coughs> about Jesus, just yeah. wherever I went and whatever I did. And I did, I did it the wrong way and use wisdom. And, but is that burning desire there to still tell people about Jesus Christ to still, Hey, you want to come to church on Sunday? You want to, do you invite people to come invite? I was grateful. Robert invited me to the Christmas party and that actually was like a real encouragement. I don't know about you guys, but I was really encouraged by him even asking me that because it told me he remembered me. I don't know about you, but I just feel like I constantly am meeting people that are hurting, that just need to know someone's there. Yep. That just need to know someone loves them. That just needs to know someone was thinking about them. 
So remember souls. That's right. Or are we going to be the ones that did all the religious activity and came to church and lift our hands, but never really cared about the things of God and never really had a relationship with him. And he said, well, depart from me. I never knew you. Amen. Lord help us. And that's scary. That literally, I don't know if that puts chills in, in you, but it puts chills in me. God, I don't want to be that one. That's right. I don't want to be that one that got so complacent and just came to church and just went through the motions and the activity of church going. And you, I stand before you and you say, I never knew you. That's scary to me. But it should, be, it should put, I'm not, put a godly, healthy fear in you that would drive you to Jesus. Yes, that's right. Yes. That would turn you away from anything else and drive you to Jesus. See, he said, for we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry and you are God's building. Laborers with God, God's husbandry, God's building. You belong to God. So whatever comes against you, you belong to God. See, he marked you with his spirit and with his anointing. So when anything comes your way, you remember, I am marked by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and I belong to God. But I looked at this and it had together with God, God's husbandry, God's building, God was first in the structure. See, God must be first in the structure of your life. That's right. When God is first, there can be a divine intervention and a divine action that takes place. Right. You need an increase? Put them first. Right. You need an increase? Put them first. Whatever you need, just put him first. <coughs> And he will begin to build your life into what he wants it to be. And what he wants your life to be is going to be so much greater yes. than you could have ever come up with yes. on your own. That's right. And real quick ending, and I, if you want to come out, it says, According to the grace of God which is given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, another builds on, thereon. <laughs> But let every man take heed how he builds thereon. What does a good building look like? Hmm. Check your building. You need a proper foundation right. in Christ. Is the grace of God and the activity of the Holy Spirit constantly enabling you and working in your life? How does that happen? Through faith in the blood of Jesus. Through faith in the character of Christ and who he is. And it is your individual responsibility not to leave that foundation. And to allow the Lord to build your house. What you listen to and what you take in will build your house. What you believe will build your house. See, God wants to bring an increase, and the only way that he can is through faith and through him, but he also needs you. He needs you to be properly planted and properly grow that he can bring an increase.